256. Stand. Number 7, S257. Senator, no. Uh, Honorable Senator, je propose que le projet... Honorable Senators, I move that Bill S257 an act to amend the Investment Canada Act, mandatory national security review of investments by foreign state-owned enterprises, be read a second time. The Honourable Senator No moves, seconded by the Honourable Senator Stuart Olson, that this bill now be read a second time. Debate. Senator No. Honourable Senators, it is my great honour to speak to my Senate Public Bill entitled An Act to Amend the Investment Canada Act, Mandatory National Security Review of Investment by state, Foreign State-Owned Enterprises. I introduced Bill S257, inspired by the rising global investment presented by foreign state-owned enterprise in Canada and troubled by the real threat they present to our key resource sectors, our critical infrastructures, sensitive technology, and ultimately our national security. This increase of extensive foreign interest in our companies and assets and their involving security implication begs us to consider whether full-scale security reviews of proposed investments in Canada by foreign state-owned enterprises should be mandatory rather than discriminatory, and whether foreign countries should have a tremendous stake in our economic growth. Two-thirds of investment in Canada's key economic sectors, such as energy, emerging technology, sensitive data, metal and minerals, entertainment, real estate, and consumer products and services have been presented by state-owned enterprises leaving the government dangerously open to a panoply of security risks as it fails to consistently perform its due diligence. While the government assesses all foreign investment through a net benefit test and from a basic security perspective, pursuant the Investment Canada Act, the highest level security screening, known as the National Security Review, exclusively remains subject to the cabinet discretion and is sparingly applied with state-owned enterprises. When a foreign state-owned enterprise presents an investment under the set of rules set by the Act, Canadians must wait for the Minister of Innovation, Science, Economic Development to consult with the Minister of Public Safety and Emergency Preparedness to decide if the potential injurious foreign investment should be referred to the Government Council before a proposition may be ordered to be reviewed under a national security standpoint. Following the review, which I plan soon, the Minister of Innovation, Science and Economic Development would again consult the Minister of Public Safety and Emergency Preparedness to either refer the investment to the Government Council along with a report on the review and recommendation, or if satisfied that the investment would not be injurious to the national security, notify the foreign investor that no further action will be taken. Based on the recommendation and findings of the high-level review, the Government Council has the authority to decide to either authorize the investment with or without condition, disallow the investment, or <coughs> require the investor to divest control of Canadian business or its investment in an entity. Honourable Senator, <coughs> Bill S257 proposed a technical change to the Investment Canada Act that would ensure that the Government and Council would no longer have the discretion but rather the duty to scrutinize on foreign state sponsor enterprise investment from a national security standpoint before reaching a decision. Under the Act, this review would include, but not limited to, the national security factors outlined through the national security guidelines, such as the potential effects of the investment of Canada defense capabilities and interests, potential effects of the investment on the transfer of sensitive technology or the know-how outside of Canada, 
involvement in the research, manufacture, or sale of goods, technology identified in Section 35 of the Defense Production Act, potential impact of the investment of the Security of Canada critical infrastructure, the potential impact of the investment of the supply of critical goods and service to Canadian or the supply of goods and services to the Canadian of Canada. The potential of the investment to enable foreign surveillance or espionage. The potential of the investment to hinder current or future intelligence or law enforcement operations. The potential impact of the investment of Canada international interest, including foreign relationship and the potential of the investment to involve or facilitate the activities of illicit actors such as terrorists, terrorist organization, or organized crime. At this time, allow me to say that the risk factors identified in the national security guidelines are not exhaustive. Some of these risk factors are capable of being interpreted very broadly, particularly the concept of critical infrastructures which is defined to include sector ranging from more obvious one of transportation, utilities, safeties, broad sectors such as finance, manufacturing, food and information and communication technology. These thriving sectors are increasingly considered to be the matter of national security. We can and really should also debate what constitutes sensitive technologies. However, I will limit my remark at this second reading to the principle of the bill, which recommends a realistic change to strengthen our investment review process against threats caused by state-owned enterprise without removing the final decision-making power of the governor in council. This bill proposed assessing every new proposed investment by a state-owned enterprise under the national security provision of the act to ensure that the nature of the asset or business activities and the parties, including the potential for a third party influence involved in the transaction, automatically receive the due consideration required to ensure that foreign governments are not exploiting an investment deal through the guise of their state owned enterprise to the detriment of our security. This provision would ensure that all incoming state-owned enterprise would be compulsory vetted by our national security review process supported by Public Safety Canada and Canada Securities and Intelligence Agency and other investigative bodies prescribed in the regulations before the Government Council make an informed decision. This bill would therefore impose a necessary checks and balances on a mandatory basis to guard our economic growth against potentially threatened investments. Honorable Senator, Justice. Honorable Senators, I feel that this bill will be an important tool for the government because it will allow the government to identify in advance potential problems and respond proactively to them where appropriate. It would allow it to resolve problems and to avoid delays, more, more specifically concerning investments made by state-owned enterprises, which uh, could result in the transfer of sensitive dual-use technologies, sensitive data, or know-how can have a negative impact on the delivery of essential services to Canadians or the government and can allow the for the surveillance or spying of a by a foreign country the investment canada act already includes an excellent an excellent and clear definition of state owned enterprise which is the following the government of a foreign state whether federal state or local or an agency of such a government, an entity that is controlled or influenced directly or indirectly by a government or agency referred to in paragraph A, 
or an individual who is acting under the direction of a government or agency referred to in paragraph A, or who is acting under the influence directly or indirectly of such a government or agency. Honorable Senators, unfortunately, in its current form, the wording of the Act requires several successive administrative steps for issues of national security before Cabinet can decide whether or not an investment proposed by a state-owned enterprise in a key sector of our economy should be subject to an in-depth security review. It is high time for Canada's policy on foreign investment take into account the rigorous principles based on national security. Bill S-257 proposes a precise and effective supervision measure which would allow us to determine whether foreign investments by state-owned enterprises are will ensure continue to be part of our national wealth. I would like to repeat, to be properly understood, that direct foreign investment, including that by state-owned enterprises, plays an important role in Canada's national wealth and economic prosperity. Let's recall that our economic prosperity is an essential part of our national security. That is why this bill seeks to ensure that the future governments will always have the right tools to guarantee that our investment climate is secure. As a result, this bill would implement a mandatory, non-discriminatory and predictable review of related to the national security of investments made by state-owned enterprise, foreign state-owned enterprises in Canada. ...are developing and deploying a growing range of capabilities to leverage, manipulate, and advance their own security to their own national security interest through the guise of their state-owned enterprises. For instance, some countries use their state-owned enterprises to exert their economic ideology, political, political interests through their techniques, are stealing intellectual property, influencing other nations domestically politics, conducting cyber espionage, and even developing cyber weapons. These legal commercial entities in Canada can provide foreign government with a strategic advance to inflict damage to our critical infrastructure, steal our sensitive data, and even influence our democratic process if they are not properly vetted. As I mentioned, the current government's effort and risk-averse approach to encourage foreign investment represent a notable shift from previous government. Several lessons drawn from experience with the Chinese state ownership enterprise clearly indicate that our investment policy needs to be updated and optimized for the world of today and tomorrow. Hytiras, takeover of Northside International, was a high-profile example of Canada's approach to investment from China. NORSAT, based in Vancouver, produced satellite equipment and transceiver, including those military applications. This private Chinese firm proposed a friendly takeover, and despite consider considerable criticism from security experts, including from the United States, the transaction was approved by Canadian government. The approval was granted, without a full national security review. The lack of a full national security review, particularly in light of the government past hesitation in allowing Chinese investors to acquire assets in sensitive industries was a surprise development and was the subject of considerable criticism from the media in Canada and even in the United States. Why the government approach to investment from China continued to evolve? And there continues to be certain type of investment that would be expected to attract a high level of scrutiny. The government response to NORSAT acquisition suggests the kickoff of extremely risky level of comfort with investment from China in a sensitive economic sector of importance to our security and our allies. 
Several others high profile transactions from Chinese investors were reviewed and approved by the government in 2017. One of these was an bank insurance takeover and retirement concept, which operated retirement home in British Columbia, Calgary, and Montreal. Ang Bank, which was privately owned and one of the China's largest insurer, had faced questions in the United States relating to its ownership structure and obvious tie to the government of China. The Canadian government approved the transaction as being of the net benefit to the Canadian economy without any question. In another notable development in relating to the review investment from China in a sensitive Canadian industry, industries on national security grounds, the government revisited and approved Hong Kong-based O-Net communication takeover in Montreal-based ITF technology. Despite previous conservative government rejection of the same transaction in 2015, this approval was then granted despite ONET being 25% owned by the China Electronic Corporation, a well-known Chinese state-owned enterprise. Thankfully, ACON acquisition by the Chinese state ownership enterprise, China Communication Construction Company, was blocked in May last year after an extensive national security review. However, Huawei ongoing bid to build the next generation on our internet is then going through the very necessary process. As we are still considering Huawei being under our national security review threshold, Australia, the US, Japan, Germany, France, Poland, and the Czech Republic have all concluded that Huawei expansion would put their next generation communication infrastructure at risk. Honorable Senators, this government and any future government for that matter should be running full-fledged national security review when foreign governments are invested in key sectors of our economy, especially when these are from countries that have rate of corruption, poor transparency standard, and that keep threatening the international rule-based order. This bill would ensure that Canada does not simply carry out routine national security analysis when foreign state-owned enterprise from China, Iran, Russia, and other countries with, with questionable backgrounds, dire human rights records, zero accountability, cultures of impunity, and remarkable rates of corruption seeks to purchase our company. This is all too important in an era of advanced technology and artificial intelligence where emergency state-owned multinational continue to occupy an important place in the regional global markets that can harm our economy and security. Honorable Senator, this issue of investment screening is relevant not only to our economy and to our national security, but also to our fundamental foreign relations. This bill does not make reference to China, to Russia, or any other country of special concern, as I mentioned in my example. But it is clear that this provision is coherent if we turn our attention to the countries who represent a risk to our national security. Many other countries understand that such safeguards are entirely justifiable, considering the increased threats posed by state ownership enterprise. They prey on manners of technology and data, some overlapping military civilian use, making our security and surveillance concern about such, in, such investment global. Germany's government indicate that it would increase its power to block foreign direct investment. China itself say it is tightening up on foreign investors. Great Britain is doing likewise, and the European Union is developing an overarching screening framework for its member. Australia and Japan both expanded their scrutiny last year. The United States adopted a bill last year to expand the scope of Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, an interagency body able to block deals that may threaten national security and ultimately protect itself. 
from any further bank fraud, technology theft, destruction of justice, and money laundering. According to the FBI directors and our own former and current CSIS director, Canada is not, nor will it be, exempt from this type of threat. It is time for Canada to take a stronger approach to protect our national security, to respond to situations that are becoming increasingly challenging for our real estate, our banking, critical infrastructures, university, and especially emerging technology and sensitive data. This bill therefore proposed a more through investment screening process to deal with the backdrop of potential threats to national security posed by new and emerging technology, arising suspicions of motivations behind foreign investment by strategic competitors and a global economic environment characterized by the increased tension and tit-for-tat retaliations. Honorable colleagues, we need to appreciate what is at stake in this bill, which remains committed to vigorously free trade and foreign direct investment, including from state-owned enterprises for our economic growth. A government commitment to drive economic growth and attract foreign investment must be achieved while remaining vigilant and active to strengthen our national security from risky state-owned enterprise investment. According to Statistic Canada, foreign direct investment in Canada in 2017, an increase of 1.9 percent to around $824 billion from the previous year. According to the Investment Monitor in 2017 report, state-owned investment in Canada equaled 24 percent of the number of the deals from 2003-2016 and constitutes 72 percent of the total value of the foreign investment. This is due to the fact that the bulk of state-owned enterprise investment in Canada is concentrated in the few large deals pertaining to the resource sector and critical infrastructure. However, the report also notes that investment from said own enterprise consistently elicits concern over ownership and appropriation of national resources. The definition of state ownership in the Act I highlighted earlier was change to include individuals acting under the direction of the foreign aid government or enterprises either directly or indirectly influenced by a foreign enterprise. In addition, whereas before investment from state-owned enterprise above $330 million triggered a review, but not at the national security review scale. According to the data compiled by the China Institute of the University of Alberta, the top sector for the Chinese direct investment in Canada are energy, metal, and minerals, entertainment, real estate, and consumer products that services that are related to our critical infrastructures. Moreover, approximately two-thirds of such investment are from state ownership enterprise locate mainly in British Columbia, follow in Ontario, and Alberta. Honorable Senator, something that seems innocuous today, like such type of significant unreviewed investment, can readily turn into a vulnerability for our security of tomorrow. Take a look at the Chinese ban on canola, for instance. A conference report published by the Canadian Security Intelligence Service in May 2018 called Rethinking Security, China at the Age of Strategic River Rivalry, warned that it is irrelevant whether a Chinese company doing business with a Canadian partner is a state-owned enterprise or not. According to the report, and I quote, all Chinese companies have closed and increasingly explicit ties to the Chinese Communist Party. The report further states that unless trade agreement and investment are carefully vetted for their security implication, the Chinese Communist Party, and I quote, will use its commercial position to gain access to business, 
technology, infrastructure that can be exploited for the intelligence objectives and to potentially compromise the partner's security, end of quote. I think this resonates all too well with the consequences of ongoing diplomatic rift with China, especially at the time when our foreign direct investment from China in Canada increased by 190 percent in between 2008 and 2017. It has almost tripled according to Statistic Canada. This should not be come as no surprise since China economy is central planned and led by a finance of 150,000 state-owned enterprises owned by both the central and local government controlled by the CPP who prey on the manner of technology and data and some overlapping military and civilian uses, making our security and surveillance concern of such investment global. About continuous research effort, I remain unable to obtain information about the total level and value of investment made in Canada by foreign non-Chinese state enterprise. However, I am able to provide the following key example. In 2007, State Oil ASA from Norway take over the North American Oil Sand Corporation. In 2008, Abu Dhabi National Energy Corporation on Sono its TAQA, take over Prime West Energy Trust. In 2009, Korea National Oil Corp take over Harvest Energy Trust. 2011, PTT Exploration and Production PLC, acquisition by Thailand with 40% joint venture by Oil with State Oil. In 2012, Petronas from Malaysia look o took over Progress Energy Resource Corporation. In 2015, the acquisition of 50.1% of the Kenyan Wheat Board by Global Grain Group, joint venture between U.S. food company Bounce Limited and a unit of the Saudi Agriculture and Livestock Investment Corporation. SALIC is a now with a public investment fund, a sovereign wealth fund owned by Saudi Arabia that controls 75% of this joint venture with Bounce. In Asia Pacific Foundation 2016 National Opinion Poll survey results show that Canadians are more likely to favor private investments than state sponsored investment from Asia Pacific economy. Canadians are correct to be generally wary of investment from state owned enterprise. This should be an important signal for us since Canada openness to high-profile foreign investment between 2016 and 2017, notably included significant investment from China, which outspace investment from the U.S. in value asset, according to the Investment Review Division statistic for the 2017 fiscal year. Honorable Senator, la croissance nationale de Honorable Senators, China's national growth and its expansion on the global stage depend on the advancement of its initiative, the One Belt, One Road initiative, or New Silk Road. This immense development strategy is growing at an unprecedented pace. Significant investments have been made in strategic industries in more than 152 countries. S sectors like infrastructure, construction, mining, artificial intelligence, agriculture, sensitive technologies, telecommunications, healthcare, culture, banking services, and energy, among others. It should come as no surprise then that we may be tempted to draw a parallel between these investments and proposals made by SOEs in the past several years, which were approved without investigation or a rigorous security review. Even though Canada carefully analyzes all proposed investments from a security standpoint, including those that do not involve a change in ownership, national security review powers are still rarely used, as 2017 statistics on the subject show us. Honorable colleagues, 
Let me be very clear. Bill S-257 was created for reasons of prudence, not protectionism. This bill would enable the government to calm growing concerns about national security when it comes to foreign state-sponsored investments. On March 2017, when China Ambassador to Canada, Lu She, laid out tough conditions for a bilateral free trade agreement, during an exclusive interview with Globe and Mail, he said, and I quote, Beijing will seek unfettered access for Chinese state-owned firms to all key sectors of the Canadian economy during free trade talks, including an end to restriction barring these enterprises from investing in the oil sand, end of quote. Canada needs to be able to function in an open investment climate, but not to the detriment of our national security. We are clearly in the area where state enterprise investment are receiving special attention in the context of the application of national benefit and national security tests under our national investment law. This is why this bill would prevent any risk-tolerant policy, policy shift from putting the safety of Canadians in harm's way. Given the potential challenges posed to national security as a result of such investment, it is incumbent on Canada to have a legal framework that addresses such proposed investment in a realistic manner. Honorable Senators, any investment restriction should be done for our security, and we need to be careful not to circumscribe too much and to make sure that we do not overreach. But I also believe that foreign transactions involving Canadian companies should only be approved if the transaction is in the best interest of Canadians and our national security. This is why Bill S-257 proposed a reality checks and balance that would scrutinize harmful investment and threats that emerge from state-sponsored enterprise. Many in the private sector might not appropriate what is at stake in this bill, but all stakeholders who care about trade and the necessary checks and balances should remain engaged. Honorable colleagues, as I say, Bill 257 is, not, is about prudence, not protectionism. This bill is deserving your support and attention, and it provides Canadian and all potential foreign investors, for that matter, with timely and predictable reassurance, the Canadian government will review all investment proposed by state-owned enterprises from a national security standpoint in a manner that does not discourage investment, economic growth, or employment opportunity in Canada. I end with my remark, President Reagan's famous quote, trust, but verify, which is all too accurate in this area where free flow across border strengthen innovation and economic growth, but should also strengthen our national security. Thank you.